And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a couple of returning good brothers to the temple. Coming to us straight from Ace's Games, they, ha they have previously been known as the double-headed monster behind VHS, Very Horror Stories. In the red corner, we have Simone Morini, and in the blue corner, we have Mattia Ventura. I'm hoping I got pronunciation right. I've had some embarrassing moments with pronunciation in the last month. <laughs> how you do? It's how cool, you two doing cool. tonight? Perfect. That was perfect. Hi everyone. Yeah. So Hello. it's been a, it's it's been a it's certainly been a few months since I ha since I had you get I had you guys on for um, VHS. That was way back in that was way back in March, and now we're back at it again with Unglorious, which I. Had been keeping an eye on for a few months, just waiting for its inevitable launch on Kickstarter, yeah. which you guys, which you guys have been doing really damn well on, and congratulations on that. Thank um, you. Really, thank you. It is because at the time of this recording, it is at thirty point eight thousand euro. Yeah. So. Let's let's go into the or the origin story of the idea. How did the idea of Unglorious come about? Was this some was this an idea that predated the launch of VHS, or was it something that the idea came afterwards? Um, no, uh, after VHS, uh, Unglorious is um, is been published here in Italy about in two thousand twenty uh, via. Um, Another Kickstarter, our, our first Kickstarter, and uh, the idea. Um, well, you, you know, uh, our catalog is in our. Uh, sorry for my bad English. Uh, I sorry. Um, no yeah, worries. Sorry, we... <laughs> in um, our catalog, uh, um, we were missing for a fantasy role-playing game. So we want to wrote a fantasy role-playing game, but not a classic one. Uh, not another D and D. Not another. Pathfinder. Uh, so let's see. Uh, maybe we can talk about not the adventure, but the dead one, mm -hmm. the adventure that uh, um, that uh, passing away in a stupid way. Uh, so the classic, uh, the classic critical failure uh, that makes you die. So mm -hmm. what? Yeah. Um, please, Mattia. No, yeah, yeah, I do believe that uh, I remember uh, speaking with Simone, uh, well, about one year ago when, you know, Unglorious, the, the first, let's say the first edition was about to get out and I, I asked him the same thing. So what was with the, with the, you know, with the setting? And he said he had, uh, he has a famous, uh, uh, let's say, distaste for classic fantasy stuff. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the epic, uh, uh, go on a journey, slay the monster, save the princess, and get, get stuff, and etc. etc. And so the idea was to uh, again do something uh, fantasy, but let's say fantasy with a twist. So you don't you don't uh, narrate, you don't play the adventure. You play what came, what comes after that, and uh, with uh, again with a twist. So you play the characters that don't make it, you know, the, the unlucky ones, uh, the, the idiotic ones. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So you can imagine it's got a heavy, uh, a very, very well, very much a footing uh, into, uh, you know, Tim Burton. Imagine a little bit of Tim Burton, a little bit of uh, Evil Dead, uh, you know, Army of Darkness stuff, uh, things like that. Uh. Yeah. If I recall, I I think either in the Kickstarter or on your on your guys's on your guys's um, website, I think you also mentioned Medieval as a oh, yeah. inspiration. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 in fact, uh, every, every character in the game is able to, you know, detach parts of the body and have them uh, act uh, on for a little bit on their own. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that that and since you mentioned Army of Darkness, that's one way to get that's one way to get the um, ha that's one way to get the hand. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, but for whatever reason, I had also thought about some of the. More crackfic up 
um, style approach that was pioneered with Discworld. I consider Discworld to be the first to be the first fantasy crack fic. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you could say maybe it, it wasn't any an inspiration, but uh, yeah, yeah. You know the the, the way that this world also represents uh, this uh, in that fantasy with a twist. Let's mm -hmm. say it like that. It could very well be uh, in a, a similar way. Yeah, and of course the big the big point of comparison I bring up when with Discworld is how it portrays the Grim Reaper. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, I. I I love the 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 Discord Nova series. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've uh, everybody everybody talks about how about about whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie, but nobody brings up Hogfather Night, which is a crime. I know it. Uh, I must admit, I I still haven't seen it. I, I'm gonna have to correct that. Ah, oh. me too. One of my. There were two specials that my, that one of my teachers would al would always show around the holidays, um, the Color of Magic and Hogfather Night. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to see them. And I can blame the I blame the Color of Magic for the reason I keep adding so many Z's whenever I talk about wizards. <laughs> nice, but even even with now. When it comes to un when it comes to Unglorious, uh, from from what I from what I recall from from just going through the quick start and some of the other material, um, you start you the player character started the character's deaths, but it's not like the death was all that notable, except for all the wrong except for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, the the idea is exactly that. So the you die, you, you die, uh, you know, trying the the character. The idea is that the character may be set out to be an adventurer, but be it uh, for a stroke of bad luck, or be it that maybe you know the the character was an idiot, uh, so he died in a very unglorious way. Uh, so they are they start in this in. The, what's called the orchard which which is this kind of midway world between the the real world you know the world of the living and mm -hmm. the let's say the, the real uh, other world that does you know the the, the afterlife mm -hmm. uh, there is this kind of limbo where the the, pe the people go uh, everything goes after death uh, so that they, they can again they can settle the things that they have uh, that they have left undone uh, so it, between it can be something very simple or something very complicated and yes so the character can have uh, basically, they can have a second chance at uh, mm -hmm. doing uh, what did that they couldn't uh, do while they were still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, now with now <clears throat> with that with that in with that in mind, and and especially especially given the lo the lines between it, the other thing I noticed on the character sheet that. I get the feeling is going to be important is the nature of scores to settle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, every um, not only every character who died, but uh, everyone who died in this world has three scores to settle. Mm -hmm. uh, so the um, the the classic dead, the classic dead one, uh, just want to resolve. He scored to settle and then go to the afterlife. So, mm -hmm. um, but the player uh, not only um, resolve his score to settle, but aim to become a legend of the orchard of dead mm -hmm. or the the world of the dead. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, uh, after he he resolve his score to settle, he start to adventure in this world. And uh, gain reputation, gain uh, glory, uh, to reach uh, the most glorious uh, of the afterlife. Mm -hmm. And with it, when it comes to like, from what now, obviously the obviously the full scope of character creation isn't going to be present in a qu in a quick start. But what I am curious about is. 
in, is in is how how freeform because the last project you had um, VHS wasn't wasn't exact was not exact was relying on a lot of pre-generated archetypes uh, and in this one in this one it the sandbox is a little bit more opened up obviously yeah 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 it's a, it's a much more similar to uh, you can say that VHS has some uh, crossing over with a, a, a table a tabletop game so now that it's somehow a middle way between a, a role-playing mm -hmm. game and a tabletop game Yep. more or less uh this one and the other ones the, and the other games on the ss game are more you know uh classic rpgs in this way so you got your your world map your your open match much more of a uh, open world so you could build uh, you could essentially build uh, a, an entire campaign uh just on the you know on the scores that uh, the characters have since you know character creation it is the player that decides what are his scores to 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 settle his or her scores, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, it could take, uh, depending on on the complexity of it, uh, you know, it could take uh, quite uh, quite mm, many, quite some time to to resolve them all. And again, if the if the the score uh, is it calls for it, it could very easily again be the the basis for an entire campaign. Mm -hmm. But it it does. When it comes to the character sheet, or as you guys refer to it, the death certificate, um, it does it does look like there are three um, there are three at there are three pillars when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to character creation in terms of what you come back as, and th this is of course of course the character creation set up as as a whole. Reads reads like it reads like a, a small paragraph, not unlike say cipher. Um, but what I'm curious is the f is the last three parts of that, what you rose as, what type, and what order. Because I'm curious what the, how how that impacts the character that you end up making, since there's not a whole lot of statness with um, unglorious. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to answer, Simona? Uh, no, no, please, Mattia. Okay, so basically, yeah, the of course, uh, the in Anglorus, there's not much a uh, concept of you know character uh, race or class, as much as as you were saying, you know, the type of uh, uh, undead. Uh, basically, you decide which kind of undead you came back as, uh, mm -hmm. and that depends on uh, basically how your car or how the the person died. Uh, and how was the the you know the, the the burial? So basically, if you're dead and you have been, uh, let's say, uh, normally buried in a cemetery, you know, with the, the normal in the, the normal way, uh, basically the bureaucracy, because of course the, there is a lot of bureaucracy involved in uh, the passing between the the, the living uh, world and the world of the dead. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, again, uh, the the bureaucracy is a little bit faster, so, and so you came back while you still have some you know some meat on your bones so you basically come back as, as a zombie or a squishy as it's mm -hmm. as it is called if you died in a way that you know your body could not be recovered the you know the bureaucracy is a little bit slower you gotta wait a little bit more and so you come back with no meat on your bones so you know the classic skeleton mm -hmm. uh, and, if, and if you died in a way that your body was actually destroyed so you were eaten you blew up you were crushed by something you know any number of way that could have, uh, that, that that could have happened. So when you uh, in that way, when your spirit comes back to the orchard, you are given basically uh, a proxy body, which is made of a you know you sort sort of a semi transparent ectoplasm. So you came back as a, some sort of a ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the, the you know the, the basic type of undead. Uh, each of these three types has a series of subtypes. Uh, which um, determines the specific powers that you have, because every undead has uh, some special key skills and mm -hmm. powers which are derived by their basic form. So, for example, uh, you got uh, some uh, zombies, uh, the squish, some squishies that uh, have, uh, let's say, a form of control over their. Uh, what's a what's a nice way to put it? Their their bodily fluids. Let's make it like that. <laughs> let's put it <laughs> that, that way. Mm -hmm. 
uh, some others that maybe have uh, you know they have uh, some colonies of uh, insects or parasites that had colonized them and they can control that. Uh, there are mm -hmm. skeletons which are especially good at controlling their bones, uh, so you can like turn your body into a weapon or do some uh, stuff like that, uh, and etc. etc. So y you basically decide your general type of undead, then the the specific type of undead, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, you have the the order which is basically. Uh, uh, doing the uh, 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 paragon with the more classic uh, f again fantasy stuff, you could say it's some sort of a guild. Mm -hmm. So the undead, you you can decide after you're dead to join one of these guilds, uh, which it, it reflects more more than a job. It it, it reflects uh, uh, a way of life, a, like a, 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 a philosophy. You know, you can have the guild of uh, the you, the dead uh, that are um, more uh, apt at relationships with the living. Uh, you can have yeah, the explorers and things like that, and that uh, gives uh, a little bit of a um, a boon. Every mm -hmm. uh, by joining a guild, you you get you get a little bit of a uh, basically an extra skill, a, mm -hmm. a, a little bit of a little boon that you can that, that can help in in some situations depending on the specific guild uh, you you choose to join. Mm -hmm. And what I what I did oh, what I did also notice is. What appear what appears to what appears to be a rank a rank system. So is is it a case where you're de you're developing v via ranks um, just just across the board? Yeah, there's there's not a, a level system, so you don't have uh, you don't start at level one and then level up to two, three, four, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you just you know you get um, uh, you get. Uh, a form of XP, which are called licenses, mm -hmm. which are one of the of the, re, of, of the rewards that you can get when you complete missions, either by scoring your settles or you know by taking, uh, let's say, uh, upside gigs. Mm -hmm. Let's call it. Let's let's call them that. And you can expand uh, these uh, these licenses to uh, power up in different ways. So you can use them to power up either uh, your skills, your undead powers, uh, your spells if you have, because there are some sort some form of spells. Uh, or getting you know better equipment, uh, um, but again there is no uh, there is no level system. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, skills and powers are divided by by rank. There are three ranks for each, mm -hmm. uh, and you can get to the, to the to the uh, to the higher rank uh, when you get uh, at least uh, you know a, a minimum number of skills in the lower one. Mm -hmm. uh, so you you mentioned li you mentioned licenses so. I'd like to ask about vouchers since that's right next to it on the character sheet. Oh, the vouchers are um, uh, the current uh, value in the orchard. So with license you can buy powers and mm -hmm. with uh, vouchers you can buy everything else you need. So um, the tape wire to to your bones, um, the act glue the the glue that uh, that can heal you heal the, uh, every every corpse um, wounds and uh, weapons uh, uh, supplies uh, uh, beers because uh, in the world of the dead uh, there's still tavern so you mm -hmm. can drink uh, in it and uh, basically everything also dress dresses mm -hmm. Since e even if you're a skeleton, even if even skeletons have some degree of modesty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, the other, but with with that in with that in mind, the uh, the other the other parts that I wanted to that I wanted to ask in that same general spot on the death certificate is recommendations and marks of dishonor. Which I'm guessing are are kind of your social are kind of your social currencies. Yeah, uh, recommendation are the most valuable and uh, precious of all documents, because um, uh, if you have uh, a lot of recommendation, uh, the um, the most recommendation you have, the better the afterlife uh, um, you can go. Uh, so. When you complete a mission, a uh, very important mission for the orchard, uh, for example, you gain uh, one or two recommendations. 
mm -hmm. for the biggest um, the biggest adventure uh, so there are very rare and very valuable uh, the marks of dishonor work uh, similar way but uh, in a bad way mm -hmm. so if you don't respect the dead and don't respect the death uh, itself uh, the Lord of the Orchard can mark you with the mark of dishonor. There is a purple, uh, uh, purple sign on your um, forehead. Mm -hmm. So if you have uh, one, two, or three marks of dishonor, your um, your goal to the afterlife was um, was worse, worse than because you can uh, you can go to hell to the hell with uh, with a lot of marks of dishonor. Mm -hmm. uh would it be fair of me to say that there is that there is a heavy, heavy amount of bureaucracy oh, within yeah. the <laughs> se within the setting in general, and especially the um, what do you refer to as the orchard? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, it it meant it mentions a whole lot of laws that ha that have to be f that have to be followed, and some of the some of the some of the laws of the orchard are a bit are a bit sillier than others. From what from what I have seen, including the whole thing of death being a registered trademark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, back in back with um with VHS, you guys you guys had a de you guys had a um had a di had a die pool approach. Is that from from what I'm seeing? Your you um all things lead all roads lead to d tens. In yes. unglorious. So are we yeah. are we yeah, going a, aim it, high or aim low? It's a much more yeah it's a, it's a, a, a more a more classic uh, aim high. It's a much lighter approach. You use a, a single d10 for most of stuff. Uh, you can either uh, uh, and there are some you know situations that where you can either uh, throw the die with it either let's call them either advantage or disadvantage. So. Uh, if you're not proficient in a skill, uh, you uh, you use uh, two d tens and you take the lower one, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, otherwise you can use uh, which are the those that are called soul points, which are you know this form of let's say ki a kind of magic, you know, a kind of energy that sustains the undead to uh, instead power up your skills and your attacks. In the, in that case, you can use two dice and take the the higher of the two. Mm -hmm. um, it's and it's for example you know you don't have uh, uh, you don't you don't use much die much dice uh, throughout the game for example you know you, weapons have a fixed uh, amount of damage so you don't uh, have the the, the damage roll uh, it's a, it's a very it's made us to make uh, combat uh, um, quite a bit faster because you 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 don't have to roll as much as you have in other as in in other games. Mm -hmm. Oh, something something else that I that I noticed is, if I'm not mistaken, you guys are you guys are act, are utilizing a action point type of type of economy for uh for turn for turn order and the like. Well, the, the turn order is a um, more or less. So you can say uh, just like you can power up your uh, your skills with the soul points, uh, with the same approach you can. Uh, um, boost your initiative otherwise it, again even the initiative uh, role it's uh, a simple d10 role and whoever gets uh, the higher number uh, goes first uh, but I every character uh, can use uh, soul points to boost uh, their initiative uh, uh, um, to a maximum of, of a plus three um, thing, the same thing can do the actually also the, the living characters they do not have soul points because they're they're not undead uh, they have a different form of, uh, let's say, let's call them energy, which are bravery points. Mm -hmm. uh, and some, uh, at least some human characters uh, can use this kind of uh, energy to do the same thing. So boost their initiative. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to soul, soul points, which does come off as the extra effort system within the, within the book, um, is it is it something where where pe where um you're not going to get that back easily and, it, and it's best to use it sparingly or is it is it something to add a little bit of oomph? Well, 
they are not that uh, spare, but you, you know, you can just uh, you you cannot just uh, go pumping up every single skill check and power because you're gonna uh, run out of those pretty quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're not uh, if you're not careful, you can run out in just you know like a couple of turns. Uh, as far as getting them back, uh, you know, at character creation, uh, depending on uh, how you uh, spend your points, your character points, you can either have usually between seven and nine soul points. Uh, and you get back, uh, during play, you get back uh, three soul points, uh, either at the end of every uh, scene, in which a scene is the, you know, the game master, the ferryman, decides when a scene is over, so everyone gets back uh, three points, mm -hmm. either that or at the end of every fight. Mm -hmm. So again, you, they're not that spare, but you still got to be careful because if you're completely out, uh, you're not able to e heal yourself because they can also be used for healing or do anything else. So uh, it's, um, it, is, it, it does involve a little bit of uh, management, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now... With that, with that in, with that in mind, uh, when it comes to, when it comes to the way, when it comes to the way combat works, I, I couldn't help but I couldn't help but notice that you guys have a interesting way of of tracking da of tracking damage because well, you're even even the squi even the squishies are going to be tougher than you may have been in life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The the idea is that you know, um, uh, undead are not uh, vulnerable to the same thing uh, as uh, as you know, living normal, say humans, uh, normal living beings. Uh, so yes, they are a little bit more resistant. They are impervious to most, uh, let's say, common damage sources. So you know, normal weapons uh, or falling from some from even great heights. Uh, uh, they do damage, but they do what is called uh, non-lethal damage, and that kind of damage can be, you know, an undead can take a, a virtual uh, infinite amount of damage of that kind. Mm -hmm. uh, then you got, you know, you got your more dangerous source of damage, which is uh, fire, because of course fire is always bad, mm -hmm. even for undead. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and then enchanted uh, creatures and spells. Uh, so dragons, monsters, uh, uh, wizards, uh, and the other undead also, they are uh, uh, able to inflict what is called lethal damage. And that, as the name implies, it's it's very bad. You know, you get, you have uh, a max, every undead has a maximum tolerance of uh, four uh, lethal uh, damage because uh, uh, the fifth one is, uh, you know, permanent, uh, permanent death. Uh, mm -hmm. where, and there is a third kind of damage, which is called the mixed damage. So basically, uh, on the uh, on the character sheet, you mm -hmm. mark out uh, either little or no little damage as vertical or horizontal uh, mm -hmm. marks on the on the damage uh, section of the of the sheet, mm -hmm. uh, and you go you progressively mark the damage. Yeah. Uh, if you if you find yourself, uh, you know, filling all the marks uh, and you have to fill a new one, you get uh, what is a, a cross. So, you know, a horizontal and, uh, and a vertical mark mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, cr that cross over. That's mixed damage. And, uh, you know, uh, it takes just uh, three of those uh, to kill yourself uh, definitely, to, to die definitely. So you mm -hmm. got to be very careful. Again, if it, uh, again, undead are very resistant, but they're not indestructible. So again, you can be uh, more daring than normal. So again, as I was saying, you can easily throw yourself from a cliff and uh, fall a thousand feet and uh, splash yourself on, on, on the ground and, and you're fine. But if you mix that with uh, an angry crowd with torches, that can be dangerous. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I noticed when looking through the orders is that there's two benefits that, e that each order has. One, one that's certainly specific to an order's typical role or its typical membership and the other is what's referred to as privileged passage uh, what what would what would privileged passage entail in this case uh, <clears throat> well when you pass from the world dead to the world of the living you can uh, you can appear in a cemetery in a crypt uh, or uh, in every kind uh, of um, of cemetery mm -hmm. 
with the privilege passage uh, you can uh, buy the, um, the the way to pass uh, to resurrect uh, sorry to resurrect in a specific uh, uh, place that uh, that change uh, based on the order mm -hmm. but you may you must have to pay <laughs> yeah you've well, I'd, I'd imagine going from going from the going from the world of the orchard to the world of the living is not is not a easy thing to do. Um, it's uh, it's not hard, but you can uh, you can wait. You must wait. You must wait uh, for the um, uh, Mattia. As, uh, as can I say? Yeah, imagine, yeah. Imagine you know you have your your. Uh, imagine, uh, if you will, uh, uh, a post office from hell. So you got your your uh, <laughs> yeah. a, a line that the, a line of uh, of undead waiting to cross over that you know that stretches all over the horizon, and you got way and you gotta wait. Uh, of course, you're dead, so you can wait as much as you want. But uh, you know, even uh, even undead can be you know can be pretty bored sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now. It's now it's not just the core book that you guys are put, putting out because the because there's mul there's multiple um, side books on the campaign as well and I want to delve into a few of them the first being um, tales from the crypt I'm guessing that when it comes to the adventures within it all of them are built with the assumption of being um, first rank. Well, the, there are some uh, of the adventures in the game that are uh, maybe a little bit uh, harder. There are not many. Most of the adventures are, um, you know, for, let's say, yeah, basic level characters. Uh, mm -hmm. But they can easily be scaled. Uh, you can, you can, uh, if you want, you can easily uh, use the, the adventures in the game progressively as a campaign. Uh, you just have to scale a little bit, you know, the, the difficulty of the monsters, of the enemies, uh, as the as the characters uh, uh, get greater skills and greater powers. So it can easily be easily be done. It's not very hard to uh, to make uh, an adventure uh, easier or harder. Again, you just have to uh, scale accordingly the level of the of the enemies you encounter. Mm hmm. And. It you, it also mentions three new three new places to explore. I'm guessing I'm guessing that would be done in a semi gazetteer approach as far as this is this particular area and what you could expect to see in it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the Necronomicon book, which I d I did have a bit of a laugh at, at at both the references made and well the <laughs> um back end of the book literally <laughs> uh, what since it talks about rules to play the deceased bandits i'd like to ask about that what is the what is the deceased bandits well, the deceased band, um, bandits uh, living outside the metropolis in the world of dead, and um, basically they are dead with a lot of marks of dishonor. So the bad guy, the really bad undead that you can find uh, in the typical dungeon uh, in a fantasy world. Mm -hmm. uh, so they they kill other dead, they kill the livings, and uh, they they can build. Uh, the, um, the uh, frontiers that are not uh, legal. The illegal, uh, illegal. Um, uh, oh God, I missed the word. <laughs> illegal frontier. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, they yes. can build illegal frontiers so they can travel uh, to the world of the living and return to the world of the dead uh, with no registration at all. Yeah. And uh, they can uh, spare uh, all the chaos uh, they want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had also seen that you that you guys have a few a few a few plans for su for some setting hacks with Unglorious, specifically stuff like Sea of Bones, Let of the Dead, as well as a few of the stretch goals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sea of Bones uh, is a Monkey Island refer. 
world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you play um, a marine uh, pirate uh, uh, that emerge in the world of the living with uh, with his rusty and uh, rotten ships. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, Lid of the Dead um, is a spaghetti western setting. Uh, so you you play um, an adventurer in the classic Western world uh, with all the cliches that uh, make him famous. Mm -hmm. Now, with now with that in with that in mind, with it, with those individual ones, I'm get I'm guessing those are micro worlds in in of themselves that aren't direct aren't directly trying to be tied to the to the world of Band Dead. Well, actually, you know, you can do that because, uh, for in the classics, in, for example, Sea of Bones, uh, it's considered to be uh, set in sometime in the future of the of the world where uh, the classic and glorious takes in. So, whereas the the classic uh, the the core book is mm -hmm. set in your, no, again, me, let's say medieval world. Uh, the, the the sea of bones it's more uh, of a you know uh, think of uh, early 17th century you know between Europe uh, and uh, America uh, so you could say that it's the same world only for more or less let's say 250 300 years in the future mm -hmm. of course since the characters are undead you can easily play if you want you know the same characters yeah which have maybe taken a very long vacation and then they decided they won't go ad adventuring again mm -hmm. oh but in the in that regard you mentioned um rules for sit for sailing and the like which is always an always an interesting prospect from a design perspective because it can be very it can be very easy or difficult, depending on how you go about it, to keep all to keep all of the people at the table engaged with um, with sailing or even ship combat. So I'm curious what you guys are, are cooking up in terms of how you'd handle that. So keeping in that man, yeah, uh, it's keeping in the spirit of uh, you know having a, a simple uh, a simple and relatively fast kind of game uh, you can tell that you can say that the the rules for ships and ship combat are uh, equally uh, as light uh, have been kept as light as possible uh, every character can have a, a, a role on the boat so you mm -hmm. can have your your lookout your uh, navigator and stuff like that your captain and things like that so everyone can have something to do during sailing and during combat, mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's uh, it's everything is kept uh, uh, as light as possible, uh, so that um, you don't have to uh, basically learn an entire new game just to go sailing. You just have to uh, apply a, a couple of quick changes to the to the already basic uh, core rules of the game. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm guessing within that that um. There, since given how you guys are playing, are playing kind of are playing um, with the with the influences on the sleeve that I wouldn't be surprised if there is a legally distinct um, three a legally distinct threepwood or or Davy Jones in the matter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ob obviously, but. <laughs> You, but you've got the point. You do. You do mention that you, that there will be um, four four more deceased types in that one. Um, have you guys? What could? You, what can you tell me about the about those types and and um how and have you get have you guys been taking care to make sure that it doesn't overlap with the um, deceased types in the core book? Okay, so I I would like to tell you the name uh, translated in English because uh, <laughs> uh, Anglorious is um, is got a lot of um, of joke in the the terms. So I, I can't uh, I can't tell you the the specific name of mm -hmm. the types, but uh, I try to explain. Um, well, there is one type for each uh, corpse um, for each corpse. Mm -hmm. So for the um, for the skinnies, we've got 
the, the Jack Sparrow of the situation. <laughs> uh, so an idiot, uh, even more idiot, skinny that um, that can make uh, heroic action with stupid moves. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, he do yeah, he uh, do not uh, know. Uh, a, a, a swashbuckling, a, a, a swashbuckling idiot, if you will. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for the um, squishes, we've got the voodoo master, so the one that can manage the magic from uh, in, in voodoo styles. For the windies, they've got the um, how can I say the. Um, the glass full of uh, of fish is a, a fish in bowl, mm -hmm. a fish bowl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Correct. So the undead fish bowl, they are filled uh, with water uh, in their corpse and with uh, fish, fishes that can uh, that they can uh, take out from uh, from uh, his corpse and use uh, as a weapon, as a shield, uh, as a throwing knife, etc., uh, etc. Et mm -hmm. And uh, last. Uh, Please. Yeah, you, you could say he went to sleep with the fishes. Oh yeah. <laughs> remember, remember me this. I I write in the. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, the last, uh, the last one is the um, how can I say, the coral guy, uh, the mummy filled and fooled with corals, an armor of corals uh, that. Can, that they can uh, use uh, as an armor, as a weapon, and for um, melting with uh, the sea. Uh, um, how can I say, the sea fauna, wildlife, the sea wildlife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can certainly, I can certainly get that. Now, with that in mind, what are you guys shooting for as far as a release window? Not a not a date per se, but just a general ballpark. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, as written on the Kickstarter page, uh, we managed to uh, send uh, all these manuals in July two thousand and twenty-three, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of uh, manuals, as you can see from the Kickstarter page. Uh, one, yep. two, three, four, uh, five manual uh, screen master dice. So mm -hmm. um, there will be a. Um, are the uh, an art challenge, mm -hmm. but we can make it yeah. as uh, as uh, we made with uh, VHS uh, uh, <clears throat> that is on schedule right now. Mm -hmm. And I I will certainly be looking forward to it. And even though I may even though I may have to ban any any um, Jonathan Colton so songs at my table be when the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Voltaire, Voltaire is still on the table, though. I'm not going to say no to Voltaire. <laughs> but with that, with that said, I would like to sincerely thank both of you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way up to my temple and enjoy the madness at play here. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. Thank you so much. As I often say around here, Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> As it should be. <laughs> and, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, bye, everyone. And at the next uh, time, bye, everyone.